So today I'm thinking about the purpose and potential pitfalls of diagnostic labels. I haven't had anyone come to my channel in a long time telling me I couldn't possibly be schizoid, but I think my psychiatrist still has doubts, but no one really thinks that all I have is depression. When I tell them that my psychiatrist doesn't think I have schizoid, their first question is always, well, what does he think you have? And I haven't gotten an answer from him. And I don't think he's even read my document on how I fit the schizoid criteria. Like I go through the whole deal DSM, I go through the ICD, I go through a few other things in research and you know it is a long document so I don't entirely blame him for not reading it but he could at least read the DSM bit. Um, if you're interested I put this on Patreon, I think I've mentioned this before. Um, but I know that I don't come across as a stereotypical schizoid, like I'm able to talk and I can seem expressive although I think I kind of just have the same basic facial expression so I don't really know what people are talking about. Um, I guess like I'm not speaking in a monotone basically, but the document also goes through reasons why I might not be the stereotype as well. Um, and that does have a few other things in research and whatever. Um, but I've been thinking about it some more, especially because, you know, I've had this idea that I might start teaching metal vocals. And in my last session with the psychiatrist, he's like, oh, you're going to be talking to people and connecting with them, and, which is something that I hadn't put a lot of thought into at the time. But, you know, why is he saying this? Well, if I was being completely generous, the most generous I could be, maybe he's saying it to be like, see, you can change, because I know a lot of schizoids don't think they can change and don't even want to change. Um, but I think because of the doubts he's expressed, not just about schizoid, but trying to gaslight me about my reactions, my side effect reactions, to antidepressants like I get pretty bad ones that's why I'm so reluctant to take them um, you know he's gaslit me on that too so with that in mind that he doesn't believe me about anything as far as I know I think what he's trying to say is see you're trying to connect with people therefore you can't be schizoid um, but I have a few things to say about that. Uh, one of them is that, well, if I'm teaching a student that's socializing with a purpose, and I was going to make a video about that, but I can't, like, it's not like I'm just hanging out with someone. I'm, it's a very structured sort of relationship. It's not me being friends with someone. It's like, you know, when I go to therapy, I'm not friends with the therapist. I'm not friends with my psychiatrist. That's very different. It's not like, uh, a normal sort of relationship, if that makes sense. I can socialize when there's a specific reason, but if you just want me to hang out, good luck. Um, so there's that. But also, I'm in my mid-30s. I've had a long time to develop and you know, like I've been in therapy on and off for 15 years. I've been working on depression in particular for 15 years. And um, you know, that does involve trying to become more social because often like you know my very first psychologist told me I just need more friends and I was like oh my god are you gonna be kidding me but you know they do try and push you into more of that stuff so there's that and then I've had my own kinds of experiences and what my psychiatrist doesn't see because I'm only seeing him now <laughs> in my mid-30s he finally meets me when I've done all this work he doesn't he can't look back in time and see that I was more of an overt schizoid in high school. I'm covert now, but that's because I've had time to learn how to be covert and to develop some more like automatic responses to things so that it's not as big of an effort as it used to be. I mean, God, my parents can tell you about trying to take me to social things and how I'd always just, they called it grumpy, but you know, just like trying not to engage in things and whatever. Like, oh my God, I have more than 30 years of history and he's dismissing me based on you know these half hour sessions once a month like are you kidding me and it made me think about so like what is the purpose of getting a diagnosis like schizoid personality disorder and what are some of the pitfalls um because you know like potentially one of the reasons that I've been able to get to this stage is because initially I was told that all I had was depression and even the first time I asked about schizoid I was told no you just have depression and what we're told about depression is that lots of people get over it you know it's not that bad there are medications there are treatments and most people recover um, now, they don't try to tell you about the people who get chronic depression and have to go through this 
on and on and on and have constant relapses, which is where I'm at. But, you know, being told when you're younger that you have a condition that can be worked on and you can recover from, I think that might have been a factor in helping me get to where I am now. Because if I was diagnosed with schizoid when I was younger, there's not a lot of research and the research is kind of pessimistic in a lot of cases. And, you know, if <laughs> if you've seen schizoids talking online, a lot of them are like, I don't want to change and I can't change. And there's sort of a defeated attitude. And so they kind of just find ways to like reasonably cope within society. But I think... Um, you know, for me, because I had, like, I actually have depression and I have recurring depression, um, you know, like, <laughs> if all I had was schizoid where I don't interact with the world or whatever, that would be fine because the schizoid stuff doesn't bother me. The stuff that bothers me is that I'm suffering so much and I'm in pain so often and I'm not enjoying life and things are a struggle and just the really dark emotions and morbid thoughts that I have about not wanting to be here and so on. Like, that is not a good way to be. No one really wants to suffer like that. It's it's your brain telling you that things are not good and things need to change. So that's why I went to therapy and I was told that things could get better. And so I think, you know, having the belief that you can get better is sort of the first stage like you need to have hope that things can improve and I think one of the pitfalls of getting an early diagnosis of schizoid could be that you feel defeated and you're like well you know I might as well just give up and maybe I'll just take that night job you know there's people who keep telling me even now keep telling me that I should go and get a night guard job and I'm like have you seen me I'm a tiny female it took me a long time just to maintain a weight above 50 kilograms and I just scrape in these days I just managed to stay above 50 kilos like I'm tiny I I can't like I don't even have muscles in my arms you couldn't even put me on enough testosterone to fix this like I am just a small person I could not be a night guard like I get it it's night time it's a solitary job and a lot of schizoids like that kind of stuff but could you please stop suggesting it to me it's stupid it doesn't take into account my physicality okay anyway anyway like a lot of schizoids will take that kind of job or you know depending on country um some apparently automatically go on welfare which, you know, things are really difficult here. Um, but like, yeah, like there's different ways that schizoids cope with life. Um, but I do get a vibe from big chunks of what I've seen of the online community where people are just kind of defeated and they're happy to use schizoid as an excuse to not do very much. Um, and, you know, people can do what they want. And the other thing I've got a caveat, people say they have schizoid. Uh, it's hard to know who's actually diagnosed, but, so that's a thing. Um, also, I think there's probably like two main branches of schizoid. There's probably the more schizophrenia related ones who have maybe more of a biological issue. And I recognize that's going to be a lot harder to overcome. And then there's people like me, I'm pretty sure this is my case, where the reason for being schizoid is actually more trauma based. And um, so, you know, if you can address the issues of trauma, uh, maybe you can change because you didn't have that biological thing to make you like that in the first place. Like it's more um, a psychosocial issue. So I think I'm in that camp and that brings me more to the purpose of diagnostic labels because, you know, I picked up <laughs> that I just don't, I don't just have depression. A lot of people picked up that I don't just have depression because the standard treatments don't work. I've always been a little bit odd too. Um, but you know, like there's a lot of things about me that just aren't depression. Like people with depression tend to be down on themselves. I'm down on the world. I think I'm fine. Mostly. I mean, like now I can sort of logic my way through more a few things, um, about me that aren't so fine, but you know, like, Emotionally, I don't have a problem with myself. Uh, you know, there's things like that. And then, you know, people who are depressed in more of a normal sense, um, they do want to get out and socialize. Sometimes people are depressed because they don't have enough friends. That's not the case for me. If I socialize too much, I'm just like, oh my God. And sometimes I've agreed to socialize with, with people and didn't realize that they were so excruciating to be around. Like, <laughs> I think once you've been cut off from the outside world for a bit, you start forgetting what it's really like. And then you'll be like, oh, maybe I should try this. And then you're like, oh no, I remember why I don't do this anymore. Anyway, anyway, um, no, where was I? The purpose of getting a diagnosis. Like, 
with the depression, you know, nothing was working. And because of my side effect sensitivities, you know, medication doesn't work. So I have to think more about therapy if I want to get through these horrible feelings and try and make my life more bearable. Um, but the regular therapy approaches were not working. Last year, I saw a psychologist specifically to try and work on finding a therapy that might help for schizoid um, because, you know, there's a few therapies that work for borderline personality disorder and that's a personality disorder. It's completely the opposite of schizoid, but, you know, in terms of dealing with entrenched uh, patterns of behavior and thought, maybe something, maybe we could find something. So we tried that because, you know, I, once we got the diagnosis that it's schizoid personality disorder, that kind of explains why the standard depression therapies weren't working. So, you know, to treat the depression, we have to recognize the schizoid and recognize the potential barriers to me getting treatment. And with that in mind, with schizoid in mind, we can find a different pathway to treat the depression. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I didn't write notes for this video. It's kind of just off the top of my head. And then I came here, sat down and was like, ah, and then there's been helicopters going. And then I've had to like restart this video so many times because I couldn't focus. Anyway, no. So the purpose of the purpose of getting a diagnostic label is really like i mean yes understanding yourself but why do you want to understand yourself because you want to fix a problem and for me the problem is depression okay so that's why um <laughs> getting diagnosed schizoid is important and helpful because otherwise how the hell do i know what to do like if he's gonna tell me i don't have schizoid and he's not gonna give me any alternative so i have to assume that he thinks all i have is depression that doesn't help me figure out anything because i've done most of the standard things you would try to do for someone with chronic depression. I mean, I haven't done electroconvulsive therapy because I don't want to lose my memory. My memory is really important to me. And as someone who has sensitive self issues as well and dissociation issues, the last thing I need is to lose my memory. Like that would freak me out way too much. So, you know, there are some treatments that just aren't suitable at this stage, but I've tried the main things. I've tried so many different therapeutic approaches, CBT, DBT, ACT, schema therapy, uh, trauma and thought form therapy, I think is what I'm still going through. I don't know if it's a specific type of therapy or if it's just every other therapy thinking about trauma, but whatever. I've done a bunch of antidepressants, SSRIs, SNRIs, tricyclics, tetracyclic. I had an ADHD medication at one point, you know, like I've tried so much stuff. And if all I have is depression, what do you want me to do next? Because none of it's working. Um, anyway, uh, now, I think some of the antidepressants did help. It's just I can't stay on them because they make things worse physically. And then I can't do anything. And if you can't do things physically, then you can't really work on your mental health as easily either. Anyway, rambling, rambling, rambling. Back to the point. Um, so with the psychiatrist telling me he thinks I don't have schizoid and then constantly bringing up, like he will bring up these bits and pieces. I'll be talking to him in session and then, um, you know, I'm halfway through a thought like I am on YouTube, like when I was live streaming more chat videos with you guys, um, someone would put in the chat some kind of question and I'd completely lose my train of thought. He kind of does something like that, but the real life version anyway, and he'll bring up something and it, it always seems to be some example of how I don't fit the schizoid stereotype. Like when I was telling him about maybe doing metal vocals and then he's like, oh, you're going to have to connect with people and look how expressive you are, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. And so he's nitpicking nitpicking, right? What's annoying about that is like, I feel like he's kind of putting me under pressure to not change. And that's the same with these people who come along saying, you can't be schizoid, you're too expressive. Um, you know, they're ignoring the amount of work I've done to get to this point, And then they're kind of pressuring me to go backwards so that I fit the stereotype more. And I'm like, why? Why would you do that? Why can't you just recognize that, yes, I fit these criteria, but I am working on myself. And if that means that at some point I overcome some of those labels and maybe in the future I won't even qualify, like that would be great because, you know, then maybe the depression treatments will work, for example. Um, like, 
you know, emotionally, I don't feel a need to change, but intellectually, I can see how these different things interfere with my life. And especially like going through the DSP criteria for mental health, how it affects your life, like things that I think are normal for me are actually listed in there as things that impair your, um, your life and your engagement with society. And, um, I can see how things that other people, like normal people enjoy, I can kind of, intellectualize that yes this is the purpose of life like we're supposed to get married and have kids and this is something I don't find relatable at all but when I look at people and they're so obsessed with their kids and it gives their life purpose I'm like shit that's what it is I just have a mental illness that prevents me from seeing that as a meaningful thing from wanting that from you know I'm never going to have kids like I don't see that changing especially at my age like I'm getting towards that age where women you know it gets harder to do any of that so you know am I going to change enough to ever have kids no if I ever decide I want to I'll just adopt like with puppies like then you skip all the ugly baby stuff and see like me as a female calling babies ugly like that's not the natural way of things um yeah anyway uh (laughs) to get back to the point though like you know just because like when when people are saying oh you don't fit this one part of the criteria It's not just that they're, you know, being dense and ignoring the rest of the schizoid criteria. It's like they want me to fit a box and everyone's different, even with the same diagnoses, like we will present in slightly different ways, but also I'm making progress. And if that annoys you, that's your problem. That's not mine. I'm making progress, trying to find ways to fit in the world because intellectually I can see that that's what makes life meaningful for other people and being isolated like it feels right to me but that's because it's a a defense mechanism I think you know people can get a little bit too attached to labels and you see this with stuff like gender and whatever um you know that current trend and you know some of the kids with their tiktoks and whatever thinking they have Tourette's and then they start mimicking the behaviors they see because they want to fit the box people putting pressure on me to fit a box. It's, it feels backwards. They should be saying like, like when I was giving you the example of giving my psychiatrist the benefit of the doubt of being, look, you can change. I think that is more helpful. Like, oh, look at the work you've done to not be a schizoid stereotype. That's good. Keep at it. Keep going. You know, does that make sense? Um, and then, you know, also the other thing is, I grew up in the sort of 90s and, you know, zero zeros, noughties, do we call it that? I don't even know if anyone uses that term, you know, legitimately, but um, yeah, the 90s and noughties is when I grew up. And I think this is also probably the case in the 80s as well, which is when I was born. Um, the thing used to be, you can't label me, how dare you put labels on me? So that's sort of a background I'm coming from and it feels very weird to me living now when everyone's obsessed with trying to find all the labels they fit and trying to squeeze themselves into labels. And that's one of the things I find weirdest about the current gender thing because when I was growing up it was like yes you're a girl but you can do whatever you want you don't have to act like a girl you could be a tomboy you could go into male dominated industries which is kind of what I did like you know I did some of the audio engineering I'm a heavy metal vocalist which you know there are more women in it now but used to be much more male dominated I also scream in that sort of really aggressive kind of way which is very not ladylike you know I also grew up um in a catholic environment where there are stronger ideas of how you should be ladylike like my grandma was constantly trying to get me to wear dresses and you know "Eh, it's not me but you know we had that more open kind of idea like yes this is what you are you are you're a female but you you do, you shouldn't let that define everything about you if you want to dress in a more masculine way you can do it if you want to do more masculine stereotypical things you could do it why not whereas now it's like if you act a bit like a boy people start wondering oh maybe you're maybe you're some kind of like non-binary or maybe you're a trans man and it's like what if i just refuse to conform to your labels isn't that enough um yeah and so i think some of that with some of the 
mental health stuff as well. People have expectations of how you're supposed to be and then try and impose that on you. And I'm like, but why? Yes, I have the label of schizoid, but that doesn't mean I have to act like every other schizoid to... I don't know, like, schizoids don't even want to fit in, so why are you trying to make me fit in when you know I have schizoid? It's kind of like this weird, now my brain is starting to get a little bit like schizception or something. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think it's, you know, I think also with some of the other schizoids, the ones who don't want to change, I think some of them do get a little bit bogged down in the label because um, a lot of the schizoid criteria does says, appears to be a certain way, which means internally they may actually want things like fitting in. And I think sometimes that might be why they, uh, at least some of them have these online communities because they don't want to be together in person. But we are, as humans, a tribal species. That's how we survived by working together. And so having an online community is sort of like having that, but at an arm's distance. And, um, you know, in order to fit in, they feel like they have to be this kind of flatness. And I'm sort of, what I'm saying is like, yes, maybe you are schizoid, but you don't have to let other schizoids dictate that to you, um, how you want to be. And you don't have to let psychiatrists, narrow-minded psychiatrists dictate that to you. And, you know, as I've mentioned previously, that flattened affect is just one piece of one criteria out of seven criteria in the DSM and you only need four out of seven to qualify. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I can act like this. I can talk, I can express myself. Also, um, with schizoids as well, because we are very much in our heads, I think a lot of schizoids tend to think of themselves as very thoughtful and mistake thoughtfulness for intelligence um, and mistake thoughtfulness for wisdom and other things. And so, you know, I mean, I guess I'm being a little bit, am I being condescending or am I being like, ha ha, I'm smarter than you or whatever. I don't know. It's just, I know, I think there's some pseudo intellectualism that goes around as well. Um, I'm, I've forgotten the point that I was trying to make though, but I think what's a bit unusual about me perhaps is that I'm able to take different perspectives about myself. So yes, there's sort of like the internal experience, the emotional experience of, I think, you know, being asocial is fine. I am not interested in going out and hanging out with people. I'm not interested in going out and having relationships. Um, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. But I can also take the perspective of, yes, but I also have depression. And why is that a problem? And then I can detach from my own internal experience and think from a distance like this is probably a problem even though I don't feel like it's a problem intellectually I can see that and so I think um you know my experience of life is I, I think different to other people's and it's taken me a while to realize because I only really know how I experience the world but from listening to other people talk and you know people's comments and whatever I've sort of picked up that people often don't have that experience of disconnecting how they feel versus like a more objective separated view of themselves. That might be something a little bit peculiar to me, maybe because of the way I dissociate. I, I'm not sure. I haven't really figured this out yet, but I get the impression that a lot of people mostly have that internal experience, that mostly that emotional thing and their perspective stays in there. So they only think the whole thing about, I don't need to change and nothing's a problem. Um, they don't really do so much of the separation. I don't know, it's hard to say, especially cause like, um, there are some people saying they're schizoid who do leave the comments, but then I assume there's also a bunch of schizoids who just watch my videos or just read what communities are writing to each other and never actually say anything. I think there's probably that that level of extreme schizoid um, and who knows what they're thinking. Um, oh, speaking about the stereotypes again though, maybe I should mention like one of the reasons that I probably deviate from the stereotype and that's because, um, I think I've mentioned this previously, I'm not sure, but you know, if you are very severely schizoid, like, you know, everything's a spectrum. We know that from autism now. There's different levels of severity. If you have really severe schizoid personality disorder and you are like really severely the stereotype of where you just 
disconnect from the world and you don't do anything chances are that someone in your life is going to be concerned because like yes schizoids want to live alone but they're not necessarily going to start off living alone unless they've been kicked out by their parents or whatever but you know chances are they've grown up with parents or at least some of them and then there's the really severe ones and their parents are trying to look after them but they're not getting any response so then they drag their schizoid kid or you know friend whatever they drag this person sit them in front of a psychiatrist and go this person has a problem what's wrong with them and so a lot of the schizoid mental health sorry a lot of the mental health community they probably only really see those intense cases like there are those of us like me who have no problems really like we're able to blend in just enough to get by and just have people think we were shy or socially anxious or whatever but we were able to get by the reason i went to therapy is because i had depression and because that's what i talked about um and had therapists who didn't listen to the fact that i didn't want it wasn't just that i just need friends like my first psychologist said um, they just tended to, to assume that all I had was depression and didn't really look beyond that because they couldn't see beyond that. Whereas someone who has been dragged into <laughs> to see a mental health professional who has that intense stereotypical whatever, who isn't talking about being depressed, they're the ones who are probably going to get diagnosed with schizoid first. Does that make sense? Like the ones who are really, really stereotypical, they're probably the only ones that most clinicians will ever like be aware that yes this person is schizoid whereas if it's someone like me who can mask and who has other issues um that can be you know where schizoid can be missed you know if i hadn't sort of mentioned it to my gp and if we hadn't figured it out together i might never have been diagnosed which wouldn't mean that i'm not schizoid it just means that no one would know i'm schizoid I hope that makes kind of sense like I think it's probably a biased sample because schizoids don't come forward for therapy for being schizoid we don't really see it as a problem in itself the reasons we come to therapy are either because we have comorbid conditions like depression which do suck which you do want to change so you go to therapy because that's what you're told you're supposed to do or the other people going are people who've been dragged there because they're so strongly a stereotype that it it looks problematic to other people and so they put you in therapy like those are probably i think the two main reasons we present um that's a bit of a tangent i guess from like the purpose and pitfalls but um yeah i just thought that was kind of an interesting thing sorry i really should have written notes to stay on topic but yeah if i go back to the the main things like so the pitfalls i think if you're diagnosed early and you're told that there is no hope that you will ever um be able to interact in society normally um and you shouldn't even try like you feel like you shouldn't even try i think if you get that type of diagnosis that could actually be part of the problem for some schizoids who maybe do have comorbid depression and just sort of resign themselves to that or you know worse i have like there was like oh who was that was it san leaf who made a schizoid diary and mentioned how he got diagnosed and it's because um you know he tried to not be here anymore and that's how he eventually found out um but yeah no uh, I'm getting myself confused again because I didn't expect to bring up that example. Um, uh, maybe I'm done. Am I done? Like in that Monty Python sketch? I think you were done. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the pitfalls. Oh, yeah, so... Yeah, okay, that was sort of a morbid pitfall. Okay, yeah, I just think like if you get the diagnosis too early and if you uh, identify with it too strongly and believe the things about how there's no research on how to help it, which might be true. Hopefully that's changing over time. There's not a lot of good research, but that's partly our own fault because we don't come forward for research. So, you know, how are they ever going to figure out how to help us engage with society and try to find meaning in society and whatever, I don't know, pitfalls, yeah. Um, so like, I guess, it did suck not knowing why I was this way and why the depression, you know, the depression treatments weren't working. But I can kind of see that if I had gotten the schizoid diagnosis earlier, maybe I wouldn't have made as much progress. Because if I was told I was schizoid early, would I have gone and done those retail jobs? Would I have just thought, oh, I'm schizoid, retail isn't a good fit, I won't even try? 
ah, that's what I'm trying to get back on track to. So yeah, I just, I wonder about that because on the one hand, yeah, getting the diagnosis, maybe that would have helped me find different pathways. But on the other hand, maybe it would have entrenched the patterns more and I wouldn't have been able to become like this. Hard to say. It's something I wonder about, especially with the defeatist attitude that I've come across with some schizoids out there. Um, pitfalls also the purpose of getting diagnosis though on the flip side it does help me understand myself for example I didn't know that I had trauma until I got the schizoid diagnosis sat down for a damn long time and thought oh shit it is a trauma thing and I have been through all this and I have felt emotionally neglected by my parents and that probably is how I ended up this way and then I have to think about well what do I do with that information next and what are some ways that I can find healthier connections in society that might change, try to change some of that entrenched perspective that's part of the personality disorder? And, you know, what's wrong with change when I have chronic depression that's being hindered by schizoid personality disorder? Maybe I should change. Like, I don't feel like I need to change, but I can see why it might be of a benefit. There we go. Back to the purpose of diagnostic labels and so when my psychiatrist or people on the internet tell me I'm not schizoid enough for them it does feel like you know they're not recognizing the fact that I can change that I am I have been around for a long time like you know high school I was overt schizoid but that was like half my lifetime ago that was the first half of my life and then I've had that same time again almost that same amount of time I've been out of high school and been in therapy and been trying to teach myself, reading about psychology, reading about philosophy even, which, you know, after a while gets a bit tedious because they're so up themselves, the philosophers. But, um, you know, just trying to get more of a perspective of life and try and figure out why don't I fit this and whatever. Like, I put so much work in and then they're just like, oh, you're not schizoid. I'm like, if I hadn't put this work in, you wouldn't be saying that because I would still be that quiet, closed off kid off in my own little fantasy world most of the time, not wanting to be around people, not able to express myself, mostly keeping that dead face. Um, sometimes I wonder if maybe I look young because I don't have wrinkles, because I don't actually do as much with my face, because I keep to myself and so I don't have much reason to show an emotion. I don't know if that's a thing. I'm also half Asian, so I think that throws people off in terms of my age. And then also I dress like this, like a nutcase, because I am a nutcase. That's the whole point of mental illness. <laughs> I know people are like, you know, when you're diagnosed with a mental illness, they try and tell you, you're not crazy. And I'm like, but that's what mental illness is. I am crazy and I don't feel offended if people want to tell me I'm crazy because I am I don't think in a normal way isn't that what crazy is anyway I am rambling I'm sorry um just yeah I don't have much time left in this space and so I thought if I sit down and write notes I'm just never gonna gonna get around to it so that's just some thoughts based on my psychiatrist down in my diagnosis um if like you know I'm sure my patrons on Patreon have, my cult members on Patreon, sorry, I've got to use the proper terminology. Um, yes, destructionism, come and join us. To create, you must first destroy. It's kind of a fun, fun thing, because, you know, to make a chair, you've got to chop down a tree and build the chair out of the tree, or whatever this chair was built out of, I don't even know. <laughs> Oil dug out of the ground if it's made out of plastics, or I don't know. I'd be surprised if anything is real leather these days, but if it's real leather, then you had to kill a cow, for example. Um, yeah, anyway, what was I saying? No, cult members have probably read my documents on how I fit the schizoid criteria, why I deviate from that, um, and some other interesting things in research. For example, I'm low weight. I didn't, I think that's in some newer research, but I didn't realize that low weight was associated with being schizoid, and one of the arguments put forward is like with anhedonia we don't get that interested in food um so that's kind of an interesting thing um <clears throat> anyway yeah uh like <laughs> so that there is that document it goes through a lot of stuff and it includes historical things because i have had so much time to develop and be a bit different and present differently and I have had time to experiment with life and experiment with you know if I do something differently does that help the depression 
blah 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 and then I do have some of the dissociative dissociative things and you know I sort of had the thought okay let's say we believe the psychologist who thinks I might have DID I don't believe because at least by the DSM criteria I don't have memory loss so that automatically disqualifies me from the DSM if you look at the ICD you could weasel me into DID if you really tried but whatever I don't know what criteria she's using if we're generous and let's say I have DID um, dissociative identity disorder previously known as multiple personalities okay now we know what we're talking about let's say I have that condition something that I wonder about is like would it be possible for like one part of me to be schizoid but then the other part of me is not is that a thing or if you have a personality disorder does it affect all your personalities I don't know because I I have my first really clear really clear memory of dissociating was when we had to do speeches in high school I used to be able to weasel out of them in primary school by being sick or um, managing to time things so that I would be on holiday with the family and then that was like the end of the period of time where we'd have to be doing debates and so on so I'd just completely miss out like I was pretty good at avoiding that kind of stuff in primary school but in high school they just reschedule things if you don't do things on time and then you could risk being the only person doing it and so you don't get to watch other people be anxious you just are the only person up there whatever anyway no I have a really clear memory in year seven getting up to do a speech being super anxious but once I got up there I just went on autopilot. I think I actually make a lot of my videos in autopilot as well. And if I get to, like, I'm sort of doing it now, if I become too aware of myself talking, sometimes that can completely throw off the video. And so, hang on, I've got to try not to be too aware. So I've got to try not to think too much about what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, once I got up on in front of the class to do my speech, and like, this was a hundred... 130 people I think because the classes were so fucking huge in high school compared to primary school anyway um yeah once I got up there I just went on autopilot and then suddenly it was over and I went back and sat down and was like huh somehow I got through that that was weird um and you know like I don't really know how I talked I probably talked in a bit of a monotone and probably rushed it and was just like ba la 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 um I don't remember that far back but you know it does kind of make me wonder because when I go on stage these days as a musician performer I think I also have a similar experience like you know I've practiced the thing and whatever and I guess because I've practiced I kind of go on autopilot and I'm not entirely present in the moment and so it's like whatever part of me that handles that I just do the thing and I get through it and then I get off stage and I've still got all that adrenaline and I'm like wow I just did a performance I'm gonna like and then suddenly I'm talking to everyone, even though I wouldn't normally talk, like adrenaline's a hell of a thing. Um, that's the way to make me talkative, is get me the right type of adrenaline. But yeah, no, it's just like this kind of amusing thought I had, because I watched Danny Phantom, uh, I finally sat down and watched some DVDs, and then there were some things that came up, and I started to get some of the dissociation triggered by that. And um, yeah, it sort of just put it in my mind again. And then YouTube, I was watching something about gender stuff and it turned into a thing about DID and then and then I was trying to do some singing and my computer chose a song that had a very strong split personality theme and I'm like ah suddenly the world's bombarding me with that again I'm like mm. so anyway anyway point being I just had a thought about that like I don't think this is a thing but maybe some of my ability to not seem schizoid might be related to a dissociative thing and I know a lot of schizoids talk about dissociation but sometimes I get the impression they're talking about emotional dissociation rather than having my sense of self get all screwed up like that um, so I don't know but that's just a sort of interesting thought to end on um, I think it's more just that I put in the work to change but maybe some of that work has turned into like automatic programs as well so like you know like I said if I become too aware of what I'm saying in a video sometimes that can completely destroy the video because I just sort of I become too aware of what I'm doing and just stop and I'm like oh <laughs> um yeah no I think it's the work that I've put in but I recognize I could have created some autopilot scripts and so I'll think about what do I want to talk about in the video today okay here's the topic sit down and then my mouth just <clears throat> and that's how you end up with a 40 minute video and I'm gonna go bye